card is the final card in the Major Arcana. And this is the definitive ending of a cycle. It is completed. This, the birth has taken place, the child is born, the, the project is done. This is done, but on a really good level. So it's not like the death card where there's still this sense of loss, fear, trepidation. Here it is so complete that all pieces and parts have been integrated that everybody feels satisfied. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm working with the Rider Waite again, the Crowley Tarot, as well as the Wizard of Odd, and we'll dive right in and get started with the Rider Waite. The Rider Waite, you see this female figure, and this female figure is sometimes represented as Mercury or Hermes or an her hermaphrodite or, 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 or whatever. <laughs> um, in the case of the hermaphrodite, it would be the union of the masculine and the feminine, the completed all chemical process that began in the temperance card and um, things have come to fruition in the case of the female this is representing wisdom or sophia and this is in this circle of these four beings which we've seen in other cards before the um, wheel of fortune for example and so we've got the four signs of taurus um leo um, Scorpio and Aquarius right so this is the I do or the material inspiration or fire element Scorpio being this um, intuitive but also bringing things to an end um, deep introspection but also Aquarius the sign of humanity and thinking forward and futuristic and development and expansion and so on right so we've got wisdom in the circle of all of that and something has come to completion right moving on with the actually one more thing before i move on to the crowley is that in the um, pictorial key to the rider weight what we see in the um in the table of contents is that the fool card which has no place it has no set place in the 0 to 22 it is placed right before the world card so the judgment then the fool then the world card so it's really interesting because of course the fool is walking right he's been reawakened he's walking about to step off that cliff and what happens when he step off that cliff all his clothes are blown away including that red feather in his cap and that red feather maybe this one here you know or maybe that's the blanket of the sun card who knows but um, it's interesting plus the fool is also seen as the balance to the world card the world card is seen as the feminine and the fool is seen as the masculine but we'll get into that all right moving into the Alistair Crowley as always this guy dives deep <laughs> So the Alistair Crowley is, of course, chock full of symbolism, and we'll go through a couple, but the others you can research yourself if you're that deep into it. So here we see, of course, um, this hermaphrodite or this female figure of Sophia or wisdom. Then we see um, the snake reminding us that just like the snake sheds its skin and starts over, so do we as well. But the snake is also represented of the divine masculine principle, which swims in the oceans of the divine feminine. And that lightness comes out of the dark, out of the, the, the great Godhead that we cannot name, cannot see, cannot comprehend. It is dark, right? Light is a creation of that. And um, so this is why light can also deceive. So this whole light and love movement and looking for the light and when you're going into meditation and finding those light beings, you still have to be careful because they can come cloaked as light, um, deceptive thought forms, deceptive agents that lead you off track. They can also be seen as testers. So nothing in the universe is, is how should I put it? It all depends on your perspective and your perception and how you choose to observe things and this world card is showing exactly that mastery over the material levels because to truly shift and change to truly transform it has to transform on all four levels so your physical level and what you do and how you act the lion level and um what you feel inspired to do and what you feel um um creative about what gets you going right your spiritual your 
perspective as well then the emotional realm what you feel with Scorpio right that is transformed as well and then mentally and what you think with Aquarius and um, that is transformed as well so here we see her dancing on the matrix basically so these are all restricting and limiting thoughts beliefs thought patterns anything that you could attach yourself to and through that identify yourself by and she's released that right so wisdom is not attached to anything and it dances freely in the universe and wisdom comes out of experience though because you have to live through this and you have to transform yourself so now she's rewoven it into something that she can dance through the universe on it's become a vehicle and a vessel for consciousness to move through the universe and it's no longer become something by which it's no longer something by which she defines herself and so limits herself and causes pain and anguish it is freedom and with this she's holding a scythe in her hands i'm not quite sure if you can see that but there's a scythe in her hands let me see if i can um zoom in one second focus focus there we go so you can see the scythe in her hand right here and with that she's cutting through um see how this eye of awareness shoots out this light so light comes out and there's this darkness here right around the eye so light is created by that darkness and darkness is not inherently bad so anyways um with the scythe she chops everything up basically she disconnects everything from herself in order to um so this is the blade or the the sword or the scythe of discernment right of being able to separate yourself from something or um, an idea thought form concept and she's continually doing that right so she's continually wisdom is continually moving away from being attached to to something alrighty okay moving right along the universe is tied in with Saturn or the world card so in the Aleister Crowley it's um, called universe in Rider Waite it's called world and it's definitely attached to Saturn and Saturn was seen as the not only the great teacher and so on and so forth but it was also the the outermost and the slowest of the seven planets and so the quality of earth was put upon it because it was so heavy cold and slow <laughs> so um, Saturn is is the cross is represented by the cross Tau uh, nope, he doesn't have it here. But um, the cross, Tau cross, is also representative of the world card. And the Hebrew letter Tau, he has it here as Mark. But whatever. So this letter represents Saturn. Okay, now I've gone back and forth over it. <laughs> but um, Saturn represents that cross upon which everything is thrust upon, basically. And you have to transcend that cross you have to um, consciousness has to push through that um, being nailed to the cross being nailed to the material world right has to push through that experience and then it explodes out into the other side apparently where it realizes that it doesn't it can ex have that experience but it doesn't have to be attached to it so the world card is also representing this overcoming the wheel of of, of life you know um let me see um it, it can get really complicated you know it can get complicated like on a different website it says as creation stories goes this is one of the best known in the western civilizations it also points out that light was a creation of divine presence and that is why light is seen as the first form of the divine what should also be understood that form began in darkness dark energy dark matter or as another meme that I saw floating through Facebook land, it said the universe is 95% dark matter and you want to love, light, and namaste the darkness away. Um, understand that <laughs> light came from dark. And just like plants push themselves up through the earth and then reach the light, the dark is just as good, is just as 
phenomenal, is just as creative, right, as the light. And as a matter of fact, dark is equal to the feminine in this line of thinking and masculine is equal to the light. So the light actually came out of the feminine. There must have been something reversed in my personal opinion in that book of Genesis where the female came out of the man because in most other creation stories, the feminine came first. <laughs> so here it's saying um, as well in the Gnosis and in these, these um, deep alternate ways of thinking is that the of the alpha and the omega of all form and that this card is about is totally about the feminine power of will to form because this card also represents the will right the will of yourself of your personality of your, your being to exist and to create and so this is the will fulfilled but we'll talk about that when we get to the room so this python that's that's depicted here um there is no androgyny depicted as activity here it says for she created the masculine form which is depicted as a twisting or spiraling python so the ancient zeus was often depicted as a python and in this case would come to a woman in her dreams as a great snake and impregnate her so remember that the masculine like i said way back in the beginning with some other cards or something like that is action right and the feminine is receptivity but also the manifesting force right so it creates and uh, it receives and manifests receives and manifests whereas the the divine masculine is um purely creative and purely about that level of consciousness that we call our awareness right this 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 consciousness right here right now that is aware of itself right um, so often it is called waves of life or serpent force or um, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. And it is seen as um, the collective, the collective unconscious or the un great sea of Bina in which he swims as a serpent. So there's a lot to this card and when you like really dive into it, it goes off on loops and explanations and tangents and it's, it's, there's so much information that's packed into a symbol. It is incredible. So yeah, I will post a link below and I recommend that you dive into that because there's so much to this card which is really, really interesting. Anyhow, let's move on keep this short and sweet attention spans are not what they used to be <laughs> and um, we've got one yo one yo is here this is a rune and one yo it looks like a flag right it looks like a flag you can remember that a flag of celebration or something like that and one yo is a really interesting rune and so one yo comes from Wotan the name and in the last video I also you know talked about um researching the names and the etymology and what they led to and so on and so forth and wotan is and wotan is another name for odin remember that odin means furious eager um outgoing extroverted but also the priest and um wisdom right odin is the prototype for a lot of things that we um you know forgotten right so he was the original Santa Claus and his his um, certain aspects of his being flowed into the creation of Saint Nicholas and Nicholas then became Santa Claus so it's really interesting to to read up on that but anyways um, so the name if I don't want to dive too deeply into this too too deep but uh, just a little bit <laughs> but um it goes back and back and back and it goes back to the god with the name of Ullr, and in anglo-saxon it would have been waldor and the name of these all of these tied together it also um shows completion Falkomnet, right it can lead to that understanding that meaning okay and um Wunyo is is the name from which so many words, Germanic and English, have been are rooted in. So like Wonne in German, which means pleasure, happiness, joy, right? Um, enjoyment, 
that is going back to wunyo. The word, the German word wunsch, which means wish, to wish, is um, the same root from which the English word and wish and the Dutch word wens um, find their roots in, right? And so, um, in a way, this can be, in an es esoteric way, this can be understood as the wish for completion or the wish for um, the ending of the cycle, right? The wish for satisfaction. And um, one second. One second. It goes on a little bit about the, the traditions with birch tree. But yes, there we go. So this is what I also wanted to say is the Anglo-Saxon name for this rune is win. And in modern English, winning. So that's pretty obvious. So yeah. And then also there are Odin. There are three aspects of Odin, which is Odin, of course, Vili and Ve. And the German Vili or Germanic Vili um, means Ville means will to will so this card is all about the establishment of will and expressing willpower being able to express your willpower that which you truly want right this is one of alistair crowley's most famous lines is do alice thou wilt is the whole of the law and it's not do as you want it's not you your person but this is your higher self right the oversoul what does it want and that should do as it wants is the entire of the law okay so this whole card is speaking of Wunyo one second before I close Wunyo is also a wonderful rune to do um, healing works with healing rites to generate positive energy um, it's one of one of the most powerful runes to work with and put together with Barakana can create a um, a what do you call it a uh, not abundance but um being being able to be very creative being very productive being very um fertile that's it a great fertility rune okay so um when you with berkana it creates a great fertility rune and it's a great rune to work with for healing and so on and so forth what else can be said about Wunyo? It represents happiness. It just represents pure joy and celebration. It um, represents that moment because there were stories around Odin coming around and fulfilling wishes. And when he did, he was like a magician that was, this is, you know, so entrenched in our psyche that magicians are wanderers and that they never really settle down. This also comes from Odin and also have a hat with a staff and we see that in modern mages as well with their top hats and their magician's wand right so it's um it's very deeply entrenched into our psyche this whole odin thing <laughs> and um it like i said this card represents wish fulfillment in the sense of your will has been made manifest and you have integrated all those aspects of yourself which were lacking integration so this could be the masculine of yourself fragmented aspects of yourself um, whatever it is it has all now been integrated you have transformed yourself you're expressing that transformation and things uh, are moving forward into the next cycle so this means when you get the universe card it does mean an ending but it also means the beginning of the next cycle and it means an ending that is complete right this is an ending that is completely complete and it is so complete that it will never ever be repeated and um, so this is happy this is graduation this is the world completion kingdom all the marbles gold perseverance success like everything it is everything your wishes have been fulfilled thy will has been done and that is that will up there okay 
when it shows up in a reading it is yeah it is happiness joy fulfillment closure moving on of course depending on the reading and um, if there are any negative cards around so this can be something can block this from happening you want to have a look at that as well what could be blocking this from happening what could be blocking this from occurring if this card is drawn in the reverse or in a surrounded by negative cards Okay, so I hope that made sense. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact me, email me, sign up for the tarot course that I will be offering in November, and I'm more than happy to see you there, and it's going to be fun. Of course, it's all online, so from the comfort of your own home, and that's November 2018. So talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.